Hello, good afternoon. Um, if you're watching this, this afternoon. Um, today I'm going to be talking about sibling rivalry. So the perspective that I'm coming from in discussing this topic is I'm coming from a background of about 15 years of working with children in different capacities as a teacher, as a nanny, um, as facilitating group spaces like bush playgroup and natural learning programs. Um, but also I speak to this topic coming from, you know, the, the experience of my own childhood as well as the work that I do with families, as well as being an auntie, you know, with um, a niece and nephew in, in the same family. So who I actually often have, you know, over at my house for a sort of, I spend it, you know, a decent amount of time with them. They come over, we have a sleepover, we do fun things. Um, so in a way, I would consider myself to be a part-time mother. So I know that my experience is different from those who are inexperienced where they are, particularly at the moment, parenting 24-7. So I speak from that to that from that space of things that I've experienced, tools that I've acquired what I have put in place that has worked and my own process and journey of self-discovery through working with children. Um, so I'd also just like to talk about at the moment the whole world <laughs> is in this position where we're almost in kind of a pressure cooker at the moment. So we don't have available to us our usual outlets, our usual distractions, our usual routines and strategies for navigating life and the challenges that we face. At the moment, there is no out. The only way out is through what we are experiencing. You know, we're all in lockdown at home together. And basically we're in, we have to, we're having to face the challenges that come up and face our stuff. So one way that I imagine that will be playing out and that I'm hearing from families that I'm continuing to work with at this point um, is that there will be a lot of um, frustration and p p built up energy that children are experiencing and that could be manifesting in sibling rivalry, which already is something um, that happens just as a natural byproduct of growing up with siblings in a family. However, I feel like at the moment it's, the dial is probably being really amped up. Um, so let's dive into that a little bit. Um, so as the parent, you're not having access at the moment to support your support networks. There's no space. There's no less opportunity for self-care, space, a break and reflection. So we're almost being triggered 24-7 at the moment without a break, without a breather, without the opportunity to sit and reflect on what's happening and find another way which we otherwise would normally be having. So first of all, I would want to say to allow yourself to acknowledge the challenge of the current climate and the current situation and have compassion for yourself and compassion for everyone in your family that we are in a position where this is potentially the ultimate challenge. You know, we've potentially never been challenged to this extent perform. So just take, allow space and take a moment to acknowledge that and reflect on that. Um, second of all, the pressure that we will be feeling as the parents and the caregivers will also be felt by the children. So we need to allow the space for them to feel that and to process that. And they're learning by how we feel and process that. 
Um, so, compassion. <laughs> Allowing yourself to do what you need to do to make space at a time when we don't have the space normally that's available to go to the gym, to get a grandparent to have the kids for a little while, to you know, go to the beach and, and take a walk and take a breather. Um, so really, probably everyone's doing the best they can to, at this point with the resources they have available. Okay, so let's paint a bit of a picture. So um, maybe one child has taken something from the other child that they wanted. It's a toy. They didn't ask for permission. They just took it because they wanted it. And as a result, um, it's causing some rivalry. It's causing some sort of maybe there's something that happens physically or they're just, there's just tension. They yell, they cry, they hit, they scream, whatever. And this is happening maybe more, more often than not at the moment or more, more than it usually does. Unusual strategy is not working. So maybe what you used to use that used to work before isn't working at the moment. And because it's ha you're, we're in it 24-7 at the moment, your resources, our resources are drained or empty or with, they're harder to get access to. So probably what will potentially be happening is that we're defaulting to the way that we were parented. So whether that's yelling to try to get control of the situation and actually in trying to release your own frustration around what's just unfolded. So this really is an opportunity to dig deep and look at what our own patterns are in the way that we've been parented that we are passing down and that are continuing on in our own parenting. Because more often, more often than not, our default programming is going to be triggered now because of the situation. Um, and it's going to happen. It's inevitable. It's human nature. It's part of our, it's part of evolving. It's part of growing and learning and forming new pathways and finding new ways and finding better, better ways to do things so that we shift, we, ch we alter the patterns of our ancestry that have been unhealthy. So this is an this is actually a huge opportunity for learning and growth and rewriting some new patterns because we're in the pressure cooker, because it's hot, we're in a heightened, <laughs> I can't stress this enough, we are in a heightened growth and learning phase right now. Um, so, you know, I feel like it's important to allow our, ourselves when we do, when you do lose your shit, <laughs> to go, okay, I screamed, I yelled, I lost it for a minute there, but that's okay because I, now I've caught myself. I've stopped and realised that I lost it. And now I can do something with that or do something about that. So I'm, I've, I'm starting off with talking about how we manage it and then I can go into some tools and strategies to apply with the children as well to manage their side of what they're experiencing in um, their tension and their rivalry and the things that are they're experiencing being cooped up at home together 24-7. Um, so, yeah, how are we parented? What are the patterns that are playing out? Can we catch ourselves when we slip up and repeat old patterns and just take a moment to breathe? Whether that's, okay, we're going to have, they're going to have 30 minutes of screen time so that I can go and have a hot shower and do some breathing and maybe journal for five minutes and maybe um, save a podcast on parenting, which I, I, I've actually shared one already, a podcast on peaceful parenting, which you can have a look at on their website and find topics specific to what's happening for you and save like bookmark a podcast to listen to Tonight when the kids are asleep or whatever, sometime this week, um, 
to help me find a new way to navigate what just happened and how I handled it. Okay, <laughs> so the children. Okay, so for example, when I have my niece and nephew, for example, come and stay for a sleepover and something happens where one has something the other one wants, they, they take it off of them, the other one cries or just has a bit of a, an emotional storm because it's not very nice to have something taken off of you that you were using. Um, so th this is, I'll t talk you through some strategies that I use to navigate that situation. So for, first of all, and many, this is just one example, this, you know, has happened hundreds, potentially thousands of times over my years of working with children. I allow space initially for their experience. So if I'm not already present with them, oh, this one's, this is a good point. Granted, at the moment, we can't be doing this 24-7. It's not humanly possible. Usually these things occur when I'm not fully present with the children. So I've, I've run off to go, go to the toilet or I'm doing the dishes or I'm preparing their lunch in the kitchen and I'm not sitting with them or even just not that, um, you know, nearby but fully present and, and witnessing and holding space for them. As soon as we they feel us um, distracted from what they're experiencing and what they're doing, often, more often than not, that's when these breakouts happen in my experience, um, which is just natural. Maybe all of a sudden they don't feel as safe because they don't they're not feeling that protect that our uh, protected protective presence where they just feel safe and content and comfortable and you know their play is just flowing it's usually when I'm not present which we can't be 24 7 um sorry lost, lost my train of thought I need to come back so, yeah so make space for their experience which also allows me the space to reflect on how I'm responding to it so I used to, in this situation, maybe going back, uh, you know, ten years, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, probably even up to five years ago. In that situation, I would have this panic come up within me, right? Like my heart would be quickly, and I would want it to stop. I want things to go back to peace and calm, and stop, stop. You know, I, w I would want to control the situation. Okay used to be my default reaction to sibling rivalry because what was being triggered in me was if there was sibling rivalry for me with my siblings as a child, there would be um, reprimand or um, anger and being in trouble, you know, from, from a parent. So that used to be my default reaction to when there was rivalry. So allowing space initially for their experience of what's just unfolded, allows me the space to tune into how I'm reacting. Am I able to hold a peaceful container for their experience? And these days I am, but I didn't used to be able to. So that took a bit of work on my part to dive into what was being triggered in me through their conflicts that they were experiencing and unpack that and release that and come to a space where I'm actually okay with conflict. Um, when the children that are in my care, I'm okay with them having conflict and I'm able to remain peaceful and calm. And it's soon, now, now that I'm able to hold that peace and calm, they tend to move through it quicker, I'm, no, I'm noticing. Okay, so I, I allow space for their experience and to tune into how I'm responding to it. Allow both children to feel heard. So prompting questions. Um, sorry, making space for their experience sometimes is enough. This is actually really a really finely tuned process. So. Um, this takes a little while to nut out because there are so, there are so many um, 
subtleties that are at play that are important to point to and bring our awareness to in order to be able to navigate it and effectively hold the space and pass on the tools for them to navigate it for themselves. That's most, that's important. So allowing space for them to have their experience. Sometimes me just being fully present, dropping into my calm, being that safe container for them to navigate it. Sometimes they sort it out like that. Oh, okay. I didn't need to do anything. Okay, cool. If not, Allowing both to feel heard and asking prompting questions. Okay, what what's just happened? He took my he took my truck. Okay, why did you take her truck? I wanted it. Okay. Um how do you feel right now? How did you feel when he how did you feel when you wanted to take her truck? I felt frustrated. How did you feel when he took your truck? I felt sad. Sometimes even just that's enough. They both feel heard. The emotion has moved through them and they come with, they actually find a solution themselves. Oh, well, I, I just want to do this with the truck and then I'll give it back to you. Okay. And then what could you do next time you feel frustrated and you want the truck or you want the thing that she's got? Well, I could, I could make a noise and stamp my feet and then ask for the truck, you know. So giving them tools to help them move the emo move through what they're experiencing in their body, the, the emotion through, rather than suppress it, because otherwise it just builds, and then next time it's worse. It's hitting hitting with the truck over the head, because the first time they've suppressed the emotion instead of allowing it to move through the body. They both feel heard, <laughs> prompting questions, yeah, and they often come to a resolution. And if not. You could continue to ask further prompting questions. And if it's not tuning in to the process, are they, is the emotion releasing? Is the charge in the situation coming to a release and moving towards resolution? Or is it looping and building up? If it's looping and building up, we need to tune back into ourselves and notice are we actually adding frustration or anger to the situation and wanting to try to control it, which is actually building up um, the rivalry rather than moving it towards resolution? Um, and we're going to, like, sometimes we're going to screw that up. Like, when we're, when we're finding a new way with something and trying to build a new pathway and let go of old ways, rewrite the way we were parented ourselves, it's not this clean, neat, um, which way do I want to do it? I forget which way you guys see it when, when I post it. Um, you know, clean, neat, straightforward, diagonal climb upwards of improvement. That's not how it works. This is, we're talking about emotion. And belief systems that were ingrained in our early stages of life. So it, it's messy. We go backwards. We screw up. We forget to take space to breathe and be present and we yell. Like we're going to screw up. That's part of the process of forming new pathways and finding better ways. But you know what? If we're screwing up and yelling anyway, then we may as well try. <laughs> If that makes sense, try and form new pathways and find better ways. Um, I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about in terms of sibling rivalry. Oh, actually, I want to mention this as well. How can you build ways to find self-care into your day? Find ways to build self-care into your day so that you have the space to take this on. Like I said, screen, all right, they're going to watch two episodes of Paw Patrol and I'm going to go and have a shower and breathe and listen to 10 minutes of that, that parenting podcast. Um, 
taking turns as another parent if that's available to you. Um, go outside and scream, stomp your feet, model to them how to shift emotion through the body. So the way to access that is by listening to our, when we feel a strong emotion, even better if we're able to catch it before it gets really strong. But usually it's gotten really strong before we realise that we're feeling something. I notice I f you're fumingly angry. Okay, what does my body want to do? It wants to yell. It wants to jump. It wants to stomp. It's going to be weird because we're not used to, we didn't learn this in our childhood. We learned to suppress emotions. So it's going to be weird at first. Um, but you're modelling to the children how to safely allow the emotion to move through the body so that it doesn't build up and contribute to further rivalry. <laughs> um, and fear. We're having deep fear being triggered at this time because future is uncertain. We don't know how the world's going to look in six months' time. We don't know what's going to happen with the economy. We don't know what's going to happen with our health. So are you allowing space to process some of these concepts? That's all I have to say on that. <laughs> and can you find ways? <sighs> um, because, again, that will be that whatever we're suppressing and not processing tends to manifest in our children and be reflected back to us. So, and like I said at the moment, this is tenfold at least. So... Yeah, allow yourself to screw up, allow yourself space to process what's going on. Space to reflect on what's being triggered in you from your own upbringing and the way you were parented and how that's playing out now with um, children. Um, anyone who's watching this, if you've had any moments of, aha, uh -huh, um, this happened with the kids and I realised this was what was going on and this is how I navigated it and, and it, you had success um, and you want to celebrate, please share in the comments because um, I feel like this is really a time, particularly because, as I said, everyone's isolated at home without their support network and their family and their friends and their outlets. Um, it's really important for there to be another way to get that support and to be able to step outside of what what we're each experiencing and get tools and ideas from and inspiration from one another. Even just like if you want to comment something like, yeah, today was really tough or yesterday was really tough. I lost my shit and I screamed. <laughs> okay. um, but then that afternoon I apologised and said, sorry, guys, I lost it. This is hard for me too. Um, let's do better. Um, instead of screaming at you, next time I'm going to go outside and scream and then come back in and talk about it, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, please share. Please share. I think it would be so um, rich to hear each other's experiences. I hope that's helped someone out there, even if it's just helped one person. <laughs> that's useful. Um and hope that you're taking the time to breathe and self-care and sending everyone love through this time. Tomorrow, story time tomorrow, I think it would be good to read When I'm Feeling Jealous because that tunes into our topic today of sibling rivalry. So midday tomorrow, when I'm feeling jealous, I'll try not to talk too much at the start this time and jump straight into the story for the kids. So I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye.